I'm very excited about, about uh, this presentation and the new data that we have from the lab. So in the lab, we're using animal models that actually replicate many aspects of uh, the disease. And in this case, we use transgenic mice uh, that they are mutated in a way that uh, uh, they model Alzheimer's disease. Uh, so what we did in that project is that we implanted electrodes in the animals. And what we found was something very striking. So the, when the animals were sleeping, we saw some um, uh, abnormal events in form of uh, high frequency oscillations. Uh, so this is considered a biomarker of epilepsy, but it haven't been uh, shown that it happens in other diseases. So we were very excited about uh, the opportunity because we know a lot more about how uh, high frequency oscillations are generated in the epileptic brain. So that give us um, you know, a framework to start and knowing more what those activities are doing in Alzheimer's disease. Um, so what was uh, very interesting is uh, that we saw uh, the biomarker in many different animal models of AD. So we didn't study just one. And it seems like it's, uh, um, it's universal. We can see it in every model. And what we did next is that we compare those uh, activities with uh, uh, oscillations that are in epilepsy. So we did a head-to-head -head comparison and we saw that they are indistinguishable. They have the same characteristics. So we are talking about the same biomarker, but in the context of another disease. Uh, this is not really surprising because we know that patients with Alzheimer's disease uh, experience seizures and interictal discharges. So this is something that we already know, but we didn't know that there is also another uh, kind of abnormality that is focused uh, and it's uh, specific to sleep. It also happens uh, at other times, but is very robust during sleep. And um, what is really exciting is that this abnormality, uh, it occurs during sleep and in the hippocampus, but we can actually record it from the cortex. So that raises the possibility that we can actually detect the abnormality in, in a minimally invasive way. So that's uh, that's a very first uh, uh, description of the biomarker. So to be very honest, we don't know whether uh, we can record it from the human. We hope that we are going to have the opportunity because, as you know, it's really difficult to obtain uh, recordings from the hippocampus in those patients because they're not eligible to do that. So we didn't even know that th those biomarkers may exist if we didn't have the opportunity to study the animal models. However, uh, the patients receive conventional EEG monitoring, but in different settings. But uh, if clinicians would like to explore this possibility, they can expand the filters and the sampling rate of uh, their EEG and see whether what we see in the animal model, it's also uh, valid in humans. I think we have uh, a long way forward to actually translate uh, the findings from uh, animals to humans, but it's uh, really exciting that um, uh, we see it in every in every animal model we studied. So I think a collaboration with clinicians with uh, similar interests would be very fruitful uh, because we can actually validate uh, what we see in the animals in humans, which is uh, our uh, ultimate goal. I think there is a lot of uh, uh, opportunity, I would say. Uh, there is so many uh, features to look at. Uh, the EEG can be recorded in many different ways. Uh, you can record conventional activities that we have done for, uh, for many years, the clinicians especially. But when you expand actually the, uh, the breadth of, of your recording, you can actually derive new features like high frequency oscillations. Uh, uh, so you can actually superimpose those uh, observations on classic observations like seizures uh, and interictal spikes and see whether uh, both have a predictive value for a seizure or for treat treatment out outcome. I think the future is really exciting and collaborations with uh, uh, scientists that um, 
you know, they can use uh, machine learning and other algorithms that they can actually use long-term recordings and uh, to uh, to actually predict an outcome. It's it's really state of the art, and I think we're going to have many uh, opportunities to uh, for for the future.